The flu is a contagious respiratory infection caused by influenza viruses. Like all viruses, influenza must gain entry into host cells to replicate. The process involves several stages, from attachment and entry to viral RNA and protein production to assembly and release from the host cell. An influenza virus attaches to a cell when hemagglutinin, one type of protein in its viral envelope, binds to a host receptor. Hemagglutinin recognizes receptor polysaccharides that terminate with sialic acid. The cell then takes up the virus by endocytosis. The endocytic vesicle then fuses with a lysosome. A lysosome contains digestive enzymes and an acidic interior and typically digests contents taken in from outside the cell. Unfortunately for the host, the virus uses the acidity to its advantage. An ion channel allows protons to enter the virus. The acidity inside the viral particle disrupts protein-protein interactions, causing matrix proteins to detach from proteins covering the viral RNA genome. This detachment is the beginning of the uncoating process. It's interesting to note that one type of anti-influenza drug blocks this ion channel. The acidity also triggers hemagglutinin to make a structural change and insert itself into the vesicle membrane. In this new form, hemagglutinin stimulates membrane fusion. The RNA genome and associated proteins can flow freely away from the matrix proteins into the cytoplasm, completing the uncoating process. The eight RNA segments of the influenza genome are covered with nucleocapsid proteins, abbreviated NP, and attached to several other proteins that make up the viral RNA polymerase. These RNA protein units enter the nucleus via the nuclear pores. The RNA segments are minus strand RNAs, meaning that they're non-coding strands. Each of the eight segments needs to be copied into a complementary plus strand by the viral RNA polymerase before it can be used for translating proteins. To make a messenger RNA for translation by host ribosomes, the virus needs to add a structure called a 5' prime cap at the beginning of the mRNA transcript. The virus performs a stealthy act known as cap snatching, in which the viral RNA polymerase cuts off the cap from one of the host cell's own mRNA molecules and uses the cap to start transcription of viral RNA. The new plus-strand viral RNA gets a poly A tail that aids in mRNA stability. The new viral mRNA leaves the nucleus for the cytoplasm, where the host cell's ribosomes translate the mRNA. In this example, the mRNA codes for the nucleocapsid protein that will coat future viral RNA molecules. Several other mRNAs code for viral envelope proteins. Envelope proteins are made by ribosomes on the host cell's endoplasmic reticulum. This particular mRNA codes for hemagglutinin. Back in the nucleus, the newly made nucleocapsid proteins prime and stabilize viral RNAs as they're being synthesized into full-length plus strands, this time lacking a cap and a poly A tail. Newly made RNA polymerase proteins enter the nucleus and participate in the production of additional full-length minus strands that will serve as the RNA genome segments of new viruses. From these events, 10 different types of proteins are synthesized from 8 RNA segments and new minus strand RNA genome segments are produced. The RNA genome segments, complex with RNA polymerase, nucleocapsid proteins, matrix protein, and packaging proteins, are exported from the nucleus. The envelope proteins made on the endoplasmic reticulum move by transport vesicles from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus and finally to the plasma membrane. The RNA protein complexes are then packaged into progeny viruses as they bud from the cell membrane.